Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Loading. I'm thinking to do a series of um, explorations of Blender add-on called Sapling. Sapling is uh, one add-on uh, you can use to generate trees and a lot of trees and create a forest. Um, we're probably not going to be doing like uh, this kind of uh, red leaf scene from the movie Hero anytime soon, but this is kind of a really good example. It's a the scene is quite beautiful and the way the visual effects done in this movie is quite interesting, uh, uh, quite amazing, and a uh, lot of leaves and trees, and they are like um, dancing and controlled using noise. There's probably a lot of uh, early noise being used, but anyway, that's uh, kind of like uh, the big uh, scene uh, project. Um, let's start with a simple one first. I might do a little bit of animation nodes, a little bit of spread chalk um, and a little bit of um, blender cycle as well because it's, um, it's a big um, kind of problem sapling okay if you in order to follow this you need to ensure you have this add curve sapling tree generator being turned on see the tick mark and then just save it and let's create a, a single tree just um, I hit spacebar and then usually just type in sapling and tell it to generate a tree. By default, that's the tree you get. Um, I don't know what kind of tree that one, but you can get a preset like um, I quite like this one. It has um, a lot of uh, kind of dramatic feel about it. So I'm gonna use this one for now and. The next one I'll turn on is the leaves, and of course um, we get these uh, two objects. I I'm not gonna separate the three leaves for now. It's um I'm gonna keep it a single object so they're easy to manage. So tree and leaves. Let's work on the leaves for now. File save as. This is gonna be sapling, probably animation nodes, and 001. Now with the leaves, um, the leaves itself is a single object. If the leaves is made of separate objects, we know that we can colorize it um, quite easily. But if it's a single object, um, I kind of wonder how is the best way to give it a different random color for each leaves. Um, that's kind of uh, something that's uh, it's like a big question that's always I always have in my mind. So how uh, how do we do that? The first thing I think the easiest one probably by using cycles material. So if I just create a material for the leaves and I'm gonna turn on the environment uh, environment light and do a render um, we know that we can just use things like noise perhaps this is like a very quick one if you plug in noise into that color you get this uh, wonderful random color um, for this is and this is not like a uh, per each leaves. This is actually more like um, like a global thing. Even though our eyes probably don't care too much about it, um, this is probably sufficient enough for depending on what you're doing. Um, with the color itself, I don't know what's the best way to do this. Maybe using color ramp and using the factor of noise. And here you can kind of uh, control the color a little bit better. So let's say, okay, um, maybe light green and then put a darker green, have some variations, and maybe perhaps like give a, a few yellow ones, like maybe it's near nearly autumn, so you get that look. So, and we can control the noise. A little bit better, uh, maybe higher noise. 
just go, uh, play with the scale. Sometimes you have to go smaller and larger. It uh, depends what you want to do, and you can increase the detail as well to get a more noise detail. This is kind of I found it maybe sufficient for most cases. You don't need to go too too complex with this. I guess um, simpler the simpler the better. Unless you want to go like a close up, but even in a close up, your eyes kind of look at it and you, okay, that's kind of enough detail, and then you don't you know, you don't care like is if a single leaf is actually um, a same color. Each leaf anyway has a different variation of color. So this is probably the best, uh, the easiest way to to do it. Let me save real quick. And if you want to have many, many trees, probably at the moment my guess is that you can just group it and then you you create like a let's use a plane and then scale it and then use a particle system. We're gonna turn off the particle simulations. Just have it as an instancer. Let's have let's have like um, 25 trees for now and then. Um, use a group like a group instancer. Use a whole group and specify our tree. Increase the size. Um, the normal currently we want it to follow the original object, so maybe turn on the rotation as well. Hmm, perhaps we need to turn on simulations after all okay, something like that maybe randomize the rotation the normal emitter normal zero this is must be something to do with the particle simulations and the way uh, the incensor work. Probably turn off rotation. Oh well. Just leave it like this for now. Probably, maybe I need to rotate the original object. Okay, it's kind of following the rotation somehow, but this guy is not doing it properly. Well, okay, now it's kind of standing. I kind of wanna to make it this a little bit nicer, even though they are all the same tree instance. Maybe need to be rotated in the z-axis at least, um, and that way we have this variation of tree. So this is one way we can approach it. If the tree itself is kind of a uh, still and uh, not moving, this is probably enough. Um, Currently, each tree is a perfect copy of uh, one another. You can randomize the scale and the rotations. That's gonna add randomization, so that can work as as it is. If we, I was thinking maybe we can, you know, have more control over the coloring, and so yeah, so I want to do that. Um, let's say for particle, I'm just gonna zero it out, and then with the coloring here instead of using the noise directly plug into the objects I'm gonna use a um, vertices color um, let's try doing that so I'm gonna disconnect this thing and then we're gonna use vertex color you can for vertex coloring you can go to like a, do a vertex paint I believe you just uh, 
paint around it. This is one way to do it, of course. And of course, you don't color a tree like this unless you're you want it to be this abstract. Perhaps you want to limit it to certain color, maybe green, and then a little bit uh, variation of the green color. I like how fast this is and how interactive and if you're an artist you want to do this uh, feel free to do that and you can simply plug in the attribute and because it's a uh, by default it's called col call you just plug that in and hopefully it will render yeah it's actually that's a one way to do it but if you want to do it um, in a more procedural kind of way maybe maybe we can use um, dynamic paint for that so I will this is the leaves I'm selecting and I'm gonna turn it into dynamic paint canvas and really quickly I'm gonna turn on the output dynamic paint map we're gonna be using vertex paint for now um, Initial color, just leave it, uh, probably leave it white. Use spread and this thing we can turn on later. First of all, let's create a, um, maybe an icosphere. This icosphere, I'll just turn it into wire in the view. And then I'll make sure the brush is not being rendered, so I turn off render. And with this brush, I'm gonna turn on dynamic paint brush, and we have this color blue by default. Paint source, mass volume, and maybe proximity. Either one of these will work. Keep it a uh, maybe mesh volume and proximity. And then I'm gonna switch to animation nodes. So we're gonna be using animation nodes because I mean animation nodes has this uh, object instancer that I always think a uh, really nice feature of animation nodes this thing can generate um, objects and then that objects actually uh, will keep the dynamic paint if I turn on copy full object deep copy maybe I'm gonna do a reset Uh, where is our generated object? Yeah, I believe it, it works anyway. The, um, I'm gonna use a loop in animation nodes um, really quickly. I just tap W while selecting this node and I have this loop. Gonna use object transform output. And in here, I'm gonna use randomize random vector plug that in and now we have random brush and all the brush is currently just blue color but yeah and I need, I need to kind of shift it up as well vector math shift it up in the Z And let's see how it goes. I'm gonna give a different color manually for now. So yeah, each one of the brush can have a different uh, dynamic paint setting. And this will actually work for our canvas. Um, We should see something happening already. Okay, I have to go to frame one, and then now we can see some kind of magic happening. Obviously, this is you know, this is the master brush. You, you can see as it get nearer our canvas, which is our leaves, we can just colorize it to our liking. So this is a another way we can go about this. Um, later on in the next video maybe i will do like a the same thing but using spread chalk to colorize these uh, leaves vertices but now we're gonna use um, dynamic paint
Dynamic, dynamic paint is of course good for like a global kind of coloring. You can use texture as well, if I'm not wrong, but um, maybe maybe not for vertex coloring. For vertex coloring, you just use a color. Um, let's apply a random color. This color is being controlled using an attribute here. So I'm going to copy that and then attribute using object attribute output. I will paste the, the attributes there. Instead of using BPY context object modifier, I'm going to kill the first bit there. We know that we're going to bring in the objects anyway. So we're just going to specify the modifier and then the paint color. Now value has wrong type. This is a good sign. We just need to use a combined color, for example. Just um, plug that in, and if you want a random color, you can use a RGB. That will work as well, I guess. Um, although this thing is still not happy because um, of the alpha. This value is not. RGBA, it should be just RGB because the alpha is separate. So we need to separate the color. Actually, yeah, separate the color. Use a vector E or combine vector. So red, blue, red, green, blue become X, Y, Z and become a three color goes into that. Okay, um, I think it's starting to work. HSP, blah, blah, blah. This one should be RGB. This will kind of translate the color, I believe. So that's a, uh, yeah, I think that will work. We're gonna have a random bell random number, seed, plug in the number into the hue, now we have random color in the rainbow color and the resulting will be RGBA plug into brush setting color. We can now have more brushes, 10 perhaps, and then reset and then even like 25 brush and control the position of the brush for our tree let it update and soon you can see if we hide all the brush um, let's see for the brush visibility we can use visibility node object visibility output plug our objects and then just hide the hide the render and hide okay so yeah that's what we get we can randomize the position of the brush and then hopefully it will update okay yeah it's it is working it needs to be at frame 1 in order for dynamic paint to update. This is going to be the start point for dynamic paint. If you actually um, go to the canvas which is, and then turn on spread, the color will spread over time. This, so this is quite powerful. Even though our brush stay in place, if we now, if I, I think, save it first and then run the simulations, the dynamic pane will cache the color frame by frame and then kind of starting to leak out into each tree and kind of kind of make like a colorize all the tree not sure it will actually bleed out into other surfaces maybe it doesn't do that but at least it works and then 
if we copy this DP paint map and then go to our the material of our tree, we can just paste it in and then do a render. Okay, this is the result we get. Currently, I think it's still caching. If we select our leaves, and then currently it has the call and DP paint map. Call is the one that we used earlier, and DP paint map is the one from Dynamic Paint. It's just a random RGB color kind of bleeding out. I'm gonna switch to frame one and see if this updates kind of updating go to animation nodes and then let's see if I turn the value 50% saturation oh okay it goes indeed it goes darker I know what's going on probably it's my color management that's ha is having effects on this tree as well need to turn on the gamma okay now the color show up a little bit better we, we can get this uh, colorful result now can see it more clearly the thing with cycle is if I make it smaller it will render faster make the screen smaller like that it's gonna do faster render and we can adjust the color right here So reducing the saturation, more pastel kind of color now. Saturation alpha value. I believe that if we are doing the color mixing in animation nodes we can have a nicer looking color as well so mix color this uh, kind of like noise color combined with our own color maybe just red with a vector of 6 okay we do get uh, the red color this is starting to look quite nice actually I have 0.55 it's all right okay now we have our red tree um, yeah so this is a kind of like a the process that I'm kind of proposing I'm not sure if you want to do this to use this technique but I think it's really good for single trees you can have multiple variation of the trees using the sapling add-on and then for the tree leaves you can adjust the color this way and then remember that um, the color comes from the dynamic paint brush that's using the leaves as the canvas and then the leaves itself is kind of uh, being colored procedurally and then it's dynamically if we um, turn on the frame and play back this color will kind of uh, grow and um, bleeds into each other because of the effects of dynamic paint and I guess that's kind of nice um, you don't get that kind of effects if you are using the procedural noise in cycles although you can probably emulate that there's probably another way to do this um, 
if you actually want to colorize the leaves every single leaves using um, spread chalk and color vertex painting that's gonna be more um, you can get more intricate result because each leaf is gonna have different color that you can control procedurally that's gonna be for the next um, tutorial I guess for now this is pretty much it so yeah I quite like this uh, this result I'm gonna take real snapshot real quick uh, quick snapshot gonna leave it there Mm. Still kind of thinking with the with the cycles and noise. I'm kind of wondering if the the mapping of the noise can be random per object. That's certainly possible um, using texture mapping. Mm. Yeah, so you get a lot of options to do this. If you are doing a real trees, uh, like real tree simulations you might actually use lots of particle system and each particle color can transfer to the leaves anyway so that's um, really like in the biggest uh, in a bigger scene you probably want to use particles anyway particle and instancing but for uh, simplicity works um, using dynamic paint and being able to manually or procedurally doing the coloring is kind of a big advantage yeah so anyway that's pretty much it for this live coding if you have any comments suggestion let me know down below and i'll see you in the next